So, remember I told you that leptin's a fat hormone, right? Here's what you may not know. UVC, which we hardly ever get, only penetrates the epidermis, but UVB light stops at the epidermis, but look at UVA, it gets to the fat area. Isn't that interesting? How about infrared A? It penetrates the body between 10 and 30 centimeters. So for you ladies in the audience, what does that mean? When light hits you here, it can go all the way and hit your thoracic vertebrae. So if you wanna know how to avoid osteoporosis, take your freaking clothes off. Cause that's the key. And just so you guys know, as a spine surgeon, and some of you may not know this, I used to be a dentist. I used to be an oral surgeon. The fastest way to reverse periodontal disease, the same way, get light in. One of the things that people talked about earlier, people don't know this, enamel and dentin are both fluorophore proteins. That means they release extreme low frequency UV light. Turns out that vitamin K2 looks exactly like coenzyme Q10 in the, in the uh, mitochondria. It absorbs both UV and IR light. Guess what vitamin A absorbs? Blue light. What does vitamin D come from? UVB light. I just gave you three frequencies of light that you're designed to get. You wanna know how you, you get good teeth? You know, well, I'm, I told you guys last year that Weston A. Price, if he was alive today, would be part of my tribe and not yours. Every person he looked at wasn't in a metabolic ward study like all the other idiots that keep studying these things. They were out in the sunlight, okay? And when we started blocking light frequencies, that's when we started seeing problems, okay? So this story about leptin went on, and the key was right here. UV light turns off the hormones in your skin. That's the reason why now when you see people come in and they get their hormone levels checked, they're flatlined. Why? Because the blue light is constantly turning them on because all of you are under it. And after a period of time, the compound pharmacy in your brain turns off. It doesn't work anymore. That's exactly what adrenal fatigue is. In other words, the system can no longer turn light into the chemicals that it needs. That's what you're seeing here. And this cerebral blood flow control is really important because the people in the audience, if you want to know where dementia is coming from and all the neurodegeneration, when you don't have blood flow, that means you don't have oxygen. We're talking about, about mitochondria. What's the terminal electron acceptor in mitochondria? Oxygen. It's totally tied to the amount of porphyrin hemoglobin that gets to your brain. And we're going to talk about that too because that story is linked. What's the key? The vitreous collagen is different. It slows light down. What light is it interested in? In UVA light. Why? What sits right here? The retinal pigmentum epithelium that's loaded with what? Melanin. That's why it's pigmented. What is melanin? A UV fluorophore protein. It absorbs that 3% of UVA that comes in and makes what? Melatonin. What else? Dopamine. Oh, there we go. So there's another way to raise your dopamine, looking at the sun. Not only talking to you nice people, but there's another way to do it. AM sunlight is critically important. It's the most important time of the day. If you miss it, there's no recapturing. Remember what Ruben said, being consistent. Ask him how consistent I am about the sun in the morning. I am a Nazi when it comes to it. This is probably one of the coolest slides I'm going to show you in my whole talk. This is actually how the blood system really works. There is so much here that you need to look at. This is a red blood cell. Red blood cells are loaded with DHA. DHA absorbs the sunlight, but the other big thing that's in here is porphyrins. What do all porphyrins do? They absorb all frequencies of UV light. So basically, your red blood cell is a ferry boat for light. Now, I want you to look at this. Everything in the arterial wall, and Chris has done a really good job in his blog and his podcast about teaching people about this wall, about atherosclerosis. What it should look like is all these negative charges are there. But as blood flow goes this way, that, blood, that RBC makes an electromagnetic field around it. That electromagnetic field is designed to interact with these negative charges. What happens to be up there? Nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is released and the vessel gets bigger. We have one of my good friends, Josh, who's a sleep specialist. We talk about laminar flow, right, Josh? What happens when you have a negative charge here and a negative charge on the surface of the red blood cell? To repel, that's the reason why you don't get blood clotting. And that's the reason why we're gonna go in an airplane, you get blood clots. That's the reason you get a PE. That's the reason why you die. 
when you're around a lot of blue light and non-native EMF, because this doesn't work. And you know there was a big talk in paleo circles about cholesterol. Turns out if cholesterol is not sulfated, anybody want to guess what sulfates cholesterol? Sunlight. <laughs> Shocker. Huh? Sunlight is the key. And what people don't realize that blood plasma is 93% water. This is the infrared A detector in your body, along with this one. Although hemoglobin has a sharp cutoff at 600, it's not the main one. This is really the, the, the UV collector. But blood is the big thing in terms of burying energy in it to ferry to each part of our body in different ways. Now, here's one of the key things. This is a picture of the optic nerve. This is the ophthalmic artery coming out. And I want you to know something. This is where your vision, the, the um, camera vision is in the fovea. This is the most sensitive part of the human retina to photons. It pays attention to five photons, okay? But there's an interesting thing here. You'll notice that there's no blood vessels there. And I told you that these photoreceptors have to regenerate. And I told you that UVA and infrared A light are the key to regenerating every photoreceptor in your eye. So how does this happen if there's no blood vessels there? I mean, you know that the RBCs are in these vessels, right? And this is a fluorescein dye study. Well, we go back to this. Remember I told you about that short wavelength light? That's UVA light liberates nitric oxide. Not only does it do it in your skin, it does it in your eye. So it vasodilates that poor area, okay? And it enhances the circulation in that area, but it reduces energy production. So how does the photoreceptors make up the difference? Turns out it's infrared A light. Do you know what infrared A light does to CCO? CCO is cytochrome C reductase. It makes ATP without any food electrons. I'll be damned. You want to hear another crazy story? A 70 kilogram man has a, a requirement to make 85 kilograms of ATP a day. You have to make more ATP than you weigh. You get one third of the electrons from food. You get two thirds from sunlight. Okay, stop. What did I tell you before? Sunlight's how many? How much infrared A? 42%. So let me ask you a question. I don't see anybody naked in this room. So could it be that you have to eat more to offset your lack of sunlight? Could that be the reason that maybe people are getting fat? Because we have dermatologists and people wearing clothes all the time and never go out in the sun. These are all the ideas that were coming up in my head. And you can see them. Right here. This is the key. And when I started putting all this together, I came up with the very inconvenient truth from my medical training that we have made a huge mistake in obesity. It really does start in the eye. And here's the picture that proves it. The more disconnected you are from the earth, as Ruben talked about grounding, and the less connected you are to the sun, the more food you have to eat to make the ATP you need. Turns out, the more connected you are, you turn out to be this guy. Now, let me be clear. There's no food in front of them. Do eukaryotes, humans who have huge mitochondrial capacity in their heart and their brain, need to eat? The answer is yes. So I'm not pounding on you food guys too bad. There's still a need for food, and it's important. But what my point is, is it's less important when you are connected with nature. And nature has made you to be addicted to the sun. That's why everybody in this room feels good when they go to the beach. It's not because you're on vacation. It's because of beta endorphin. You get the same effect when you exercise. Okay? You are built by nature to work this way. 